I want to go to Jim Jordan, the Republican from the beautiful state of Ohio, sits on the House Judiciary Committee. A lot to discuss, Congressman, so I appreciate you maybe weighing in first on this trade stuff. The president has added a couple of doozies in here that might be warranted, but the market interprets that as no trade deal likely. Do you agree with that? Well, we'll have to wait and see, Neil. All I know is no, no president's been tougher on China than, than President Trump, and he's trying to deal with the, the real problems of China stealing our intellectual property, not abiding by international trade norms, and, and a host of other issues that China's guilty of. So I haven't followed this that closely today because I've been focused on this whole crazy impeachment process, uh, unfair process that the Democrats are involved with. But I do know this, the president always has the American uh, people's best interest at heart, and that's what he's trying to get accomplished in a new trade agreement with, uh, with long-term trade agreement with China. You know, there's this other news that Gordon Sondland, who was supposed to testify today on Capitol Hill, uh, yeah. of course, our, our, our former ambassador uh, to the EU, a president ambassador, I should say, and he, he, it was shelved at the last yeah. second. Do you know or where, where, where does this stand now? Well, he didn't come because the process is so darn unfair. The, the, the administration saw what happened to Special Envoy Ambassador Volker when he testified for almost nine hours last Thursday. When he testified, Adam Schiff selectively leaked parts of his testimony, 67 pages of text messages, Neil. And they, they pick a handful, pull them out of context, and put those out there, but they won't release the full transcript. So the White House basically said, we're not gonna, we're not gonna subject the next person, the next witness, Ambassador Sondland, current Ambassador Sondland to the EU, to the same treatment, because they understand the process Adam Schiff is running. I mean, this is, this, this is Adam Schiff, who met, whose staff met with the whistleblower prior to the whistleblower even filing the complaint and didn't tell anyone. Same Adam Schiff, whose staff met with Michael Cohen, the first big hearing the Democrats had this Congress, met with Michael Cohen, his staff met with Michael Cohen for 10 hours before he testified when we kicked off this Congress. So I think that's what the administration sees, and frankly, I don't blame them. You know, uh, the president's tweeted on this, saying that I would love to send Ambassador Sondland, a really good man and a great American, to testify. But unfortunately, to, again, to your point, sir, he would be testifying before a totally compromised kangaroo court where Republicans' rights have been taken away and true facts are not allowed out for the public to see. Importantly, Ambassador Sondland's yeah. tweet, which few reports stated, I believe you are incorrect about President Trump's intentions. The president has been crystal clear, no quid pro quos of any kind that says it all. Now, of course, he's referring to back and forth at the time with Kurt Volker, right? Um, and that seems to right. maybe be the, the source of a lot of the president's agenda with this. The process seems stacked one way, that the Democrats seem to think that it's going their way, that they have the votes, they're not holding a general vote to start a formal inquiry. Where do you think that part stands? Well, yeah, and if they would release the transcript from Ambassador Volker's testimony and, and interview last week, you would see that Ambassador Volker backs up exactly what you just said. There was no quid pro quo. There was no linkage between security assistance dollars and any meeting at the White House with President Zelensky and President Trump or any meeting in the United States with President Zelensky or President Trump, and certainly no linkage between security assistance dollars and any type of investigation. Ambassador Volker was clear on that. Ambassador Sondland said the same thing in the text message, but that's not the one the Democrats wanted it, people to see out there. So that's what's unfair about this process and why the, the, the administration said we're not going to have Ambassador Sondland come today. I mean, think about what they're trying to do, Neil. The Democrats are trying to impeach the President of the United States 13 months before an election based on an anonymous whistleblower with no first-hand knowledge and who has a bias against the president. And it's being run by Adam Schiff and the Speaker of the House who said we need to strike while the iron's hot. So they don't want the facts and the truth as evidenced by the fact that they're not releasing the transcript. That's the process in the White House says, if that's the process, we're not subjecting any more of our State Department personnel to that faulty process and this unfair uh, unfair process that Mr. Schiff is, uh, is undergoing. So if they formally vote to have an, an impeachment inquiry, uh, the next step being then, then, you know, coordinating all of these subpoenas and everything else, uh, would that satisfy you or give grounds for them to pursue and subpoena not only documents but individuals, including the ambassador, to testify on Capitol Hill? 
Well, we don't know what the Democrats will do. If they have a vote to do a formal impeachment inquiry, historically, precedent is such that, yes, then everyone gets the right. Minority gets, the minority party gets rights. Certainly the White House gets rights. The, the president gets rights that, that aren't, aren't there now. But we don't know. Maybe they would have a, a, a formal vote to move forward with a formal impeachment inquiry. But is it your understanding, those. Congressman, it, um, is it your understanding that once an inquiry is voted, if they go that route, and you're right, in the last two occasions with Richard Nixon and Bill Clinton, they, that's how it all started. With Johnson, back in 1868, right. it was a different beast, right. different time. But, but do you think that that then would allow them to force the issue, to, to go ahead and subpoena anyone they want to testify? It, it may, but frankly, Neil, these guys are making it up as they go along. So even if they do that formal inquiry vote, I don't know that they extend the same rights that have historically been extended to the minority party and to the White House, and I don't know what it means for them exactly because they've been, as I said, just kind of winging this as they go, but doing it in a way that furthers their narrative and frankly doesn't further the truth. So let me then go into this issue about what the president said quite publicly last week about suggesting the Chinese look into this and look into the Biden stuff and all that. How did you feel about that? A lot of people say that was a big no-no. But he did it in the light of day. Well, I, I, I said this earlier uh, this week. I, I think the president was saying, frankly, what's on the mind of Americans. I don't think he actually expects the, the Chinese to do a formal investigation. I think he was saying what so many Americans see in reference to China, that how, how, did, how did Joe Biden's son get this job? How did this all happen? What's going on there? And I do think in the broader sense, it is, it is exactly what the president of the United States needs to be doing when he's thinking about the hard-earned tax dollars of the American people. Going to a foreign country, he has an obligation, he has a duty as the President of the United States to make sure that money is going to a, a, a nation that is not corrupt, making sure they've cleaned up their act, and that's what he was exactly trying to figure out. So you don't think on, on any level, just, just the appearance president. of that, or pressuring a foreign country to intervene potentially in, in, in a presidential candidate, someone who might oppose in the next election, that on any level that, that, that's dangerous, and because it's already... Thank you very much for taking the time. I'm sorry to throw the market stuff at you in the